Most of Earth's atmosphere is nitrogen gas, 780,840 parts per million, or about 78%. 209,500 parts per million are oxygen, about 20.9% of the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide makes up just 409 parts per million, or 0.04% of Earth's atmosphere, but it's an incredibly important gas for keeping Earth so hospitable. Atmospheric carbon dioxide comes largely from the respiration of plants and animals, as well as when they decompose, and also from the burning of fossil fuels. Additionally, carbon dioxide is released from forest fires, volcanic eruptions, and some manufacturing processes, such as making cement. This atmospheric carbon dioxide is also absorbed into other reservoirs. Land plants take in 25% of atmospheric carbon dioxide for use in photosynthesis to make carbohydrates. The ocean absorbs an additional 25% of the atmospheric carbon dioxide. We are going to look more closely at what happens when carbon dioxide enters the ocean. When carbon dioxide dissolves in water, most of the gaseous carbon dioxide just becomes aqueous carbon dioxide. But a small amount will react with the water, creating carbonic acid, H2CO3. This carbonic acid is where things can get a bit tricky. Because carbonic acid can also break apart into a hydrogen ion and hydrogen carbonate, which is also called bicarbonate. Hydrogen ion is acid, and this is where some of the trouble comes from, but we'll get to that in a moment. First, I want to point out that both the equations shown use a double arrow. This is because the reaction is reversible, so hydrogen ion and bicarbonate can bond to form carbonic acid, and carbonic acid can break apart into carbon dioxide and water. The forward and backward reactions will happen at the same time, all the time, at an equilibrium. It's possible to make a shift and cause one reaction to happen more by creating a stress. Le Chatelier's principle states that when a system experiences a disturbance or stress, such as a change in temperature, pressure, or concentration, it will respond to relieve this stress and restore a new equilibrium. For example, when the concentration of carbon dioxide gas is increased in the system, this new stress can be relieved by moving the reaction forward, creating aqueous carbon dioxide and carbonic acid. That reduces the amount of carbon dioxide gas and relieves the stress. Now let's imagine the concentration of carbon dioxide decreasing. The reaction would move backward, forming new carbon dioxide from the carbonic acid in the water, relieving the stress. In the case where carbon dioxide is increased, which is happening globally each year, it causes an increase in the concentration of carbonic acid, which means it will also affect the carbonic acid equation. If more carbonic acid is present, the reaction will move forward and make more acid and bicarbonate ions, increasing their concentration. This leads us to the problem of ocean acidification. Ocean acidification is the decrease in the pH, or acidification, of Earth's oceans, caused by the uptake of atmospheric carbon dioxide. This acidification can be problematic for sea life. Many ocean animals that build shells use carbonate ions in the water to make their shells by combining it with calcium to form calcium carbonate. But with the increased acid in the water, hydrogen ions will compete with calcium to bond with the carbonate and form bicarbonate instead. Shell-building animals aren't able to use bicarbonate to build their shells. This can also lead to shells becoming brittle and thin, and reduces the amount of available carbonate ion in the ocean for animals to grow and build their shells. The added acid in the ocean is lowering the pH of the water as well. Before the Industrial Revolution, the ocean had a pH of 8.2, but it's currently down to 8.1. While that might not seem like much on the pH scale, that's actually 25% more acid. With shell builders struggling to survive in more acidic environments, their numbers could decline, which also affects the animals that eat them. This can create a ripple effect in the whole food web of ocean ecosystems. 
humans have been steadily increasing their carbon dioxide emissions in the past century and a half. This added anthropogenic, aka human, emission of carbon dioxide comes largely from burning fossil fuels to create power. Power for our vehicles, homes, and industries. Increasing the amount of this greenhouse gas is also creating a rise in global temperatures. In the last century, global temperatures have risen about 1 degree Fahrenheit, which is 0.56 degrees Celsius. But interestingly, increasing temperatures also have an effect on how much carbon dioxide can dissolve in the ocean. It's a general rule that as temperature increases, the solubility of gases decrease. A can of soda that's left in a hot car has liquid in it that can't dissolve the carbon dioxide gas well at that temperature. And the bubbles of gas build up pressure and might even cause the can to explode. Colder liquids can dissolve more gas, so more carbon dioxide can dissolve into colder ocean surfaces. So if the ocean temperatures are also rising from global warming, the oceans will not be able to dissolve as much carbon dioxide. This may cause some slowing down of ocean acidification by shifting the equilibrium to the left, pulling carbonic acid out of the water. The truth is that ocean acidification and the effects of global climate change are very difficult to understand because it's all part of a large and complicated system that involves Earth's entire atmosphere, crust, and ocean. We don't really know exactly what will happen as temperatures and carbon dioxide concentrations increase because it is so complex. But we can do our part to learn and care for the Earth. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.